We now move forward to the highlight of the evening as we talk about the awards. But I'll tell you something. While we talk about the awards, it would be incomplete without the presence of the jury, without the time that has been invested by the jury, or maybe the fireworks they would have had behind the scenes while discussing, hey, who do we pick as a winner? That being said, it, it is definitely one of the toughest tasks because to mine the best and the brightest form of universe of shining stars is indeed a task that I must admit, I would not envy. It is, it is a task wherein the jury members come together, given their valuable time and their thoughts, which is why what we'd like to do is first up, play across a quick audio visual of the jury AV. I think our team is ready, the audience is ready, so let's have the AV on the screen, please. They are pioneers, thought leaders, innovators, and industry stalwarts. They are the jury of India's most definitive supply chain management awards. ET Now Supply Chain Management Awards 2024. This is how it all began. An overwhelming response across sectors made our task daunting as well as critical. A responsibility to honor the finest in the business. Our eminent jury shouldered the difficult task of selecting the most deserving. Discussing, debating, and finally coming to a consensus on the names that would take the podium of excellence and distinction. Today, we have their stamp of approval and indisputable verdict to honor those who are setting new benchmarks in the industry, crafting new tales of success. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we give you our jury's choice of winners of the ET Now Supply Chain Management Awards. 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the jury in fact went through the rigor of giving us our winners, the trailblazers of the supply chain industry, who with their acumen and leadership will take the supply chain story to the next level, which is why uh, it is only befitting that we invite the jury. But that being said, let me also tell you that our uh, jury was in fact chaired by none other than Sri Suresh Prabhu, former union minister and current chancellor of Rishihod University. He couldn't join us due to prior commitments, but we do have the presence of the jury. And I think it's only befitting that we also get to hear from them, get to hear their thoughts in not just about finding out what really went through, but all that and more. So what we're gonna do is set the stage, give the stage a little makeover. Let's hear it from the jury before we celebrate the winners. Now this particular session, or this discussion will be spearheaded uh, by our session moderator. We have with us Mr. Ajay Nair, partner and leader supply chain PwC India. So if I could please invite on stage Mr. Ajay Nair. Well, on that note, it's only befitting that I now invite our jury members. I'm going to quickly check with the team. Looks like they're set. We're all set. The cameras are set. All right. So on that note, let me please invite Amitava Bakshi, former chief procurement officer, Tata Steel, Rajesh Nigam, former Executive Director, Supply Chain, Indian Oil Corporation, Gajanan Prasad Sharma, Executive Director, Indian Railway Institute of Logistics and Materials Management. May I further invite Parul Arora, Leadership and Supply Chain Coach, former Supply Chain Head, India Subcontinent, Philips. And Pradeep Banerjee, former Executive Director, Hindustan Unilever, Operating Partner, Advent International, Senior Advisor, BCG. I'd also like to inform you all that as part of the jury, we also had Dhabal Butch, Senior Advisor, Blackstone and Alvarez and Marshall, and Aditya Gupta, COO at Supply Chain Management Center, IM Bangalore. However, they couldn't make it for the evening, but we do have the presence of the amazing jury here. So let's have you all take your seats and let's get the discussion started. With that, uh, Ajay, over to you then. Thank you. So, <clears throat> first of all, I think, uh, you know, the last 20 minutes, most of us were uh, listening into Lieutenant General, and I must tell you, Lieutenant General, deeply inspired, and also with the vision, the strategy that you spoke about. And the reason I say that is, uh, you know, as the jury members would reflect, uh, the conversations as they were going through with the many uh, nominations or, you know, uh, submissions which had happened, uh, many of them reflected many of the elements of the strategic thinking that you articulated. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, but, you know, 
I'm just going to take a minute and then request uh, each of the jury members to share some thoughts on certain areas. Uh, first of all, I think this um, uh, entire set of awards, uh, made an awards by um, ED Supply Chain, uh, first time. Uh, certain categories have been defined, uh, and the jury members went through each of the categories through the screening process, rigorously done, um, and came up with their thoughts and perspectives on why they felt uh, some of the nominations uh, deserve the awards. So I'll start with Mr. Nigam. Mr. Nigam, uh, would be useful to get your perspective on the process, the criteria, or the various categories uh, that you saw uh, as part of the entire you know, process that was followed. Thank you. Uh, with the general year, so I would like to stand and speak. <laughs> uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, let me first express my gratitude to ET Now. Uh, Times of India uh, for giving me a privilege for being a jury member to this esteemed first edition of Supply Chain Awards. And let me tell you, this is not a small honor for me. Last week, Ritter Institute of Study of Journalism, uh, Oxford University, along with the collaboration of Asian uh, College of Journalism, in its annual publication of 2024, have rated Times of India as the most trusted brand in the country with a score of 71. And Economic Times has been given a score of 65. It's very high. And now we talk about BBC, which, which is in UK, that has been given a rating of 50. And New York Times and uh, uh, Washington DC uh, Post, they are at a score of 50. Now, having such a high score of 71 for Times of India and 68 for Economic Times is a big, big, uh, uh, which, which, which speaks a lot about the integrity and perfection of journalism and it takeaways what Times of India and ET provides offers to us. And so is the ET Edge Award this year. The process of evaluation and the selection by them for the, uh, with, with active collaboration for, from the PricewaterhouseCoopers, the knowledge partner, was done on a very high degree of professionalism and transparency. Ranking each company the award by maintaining the integrity and trust of each nominee. This was done by a team of jury, which includes professional from varied uh, industries, including uh, a professor from I am uh, Bangalore. Uh, he is today not here, but the these uh, these jury members has an experience of more than two to three uh, decades in seeing the evolution of supply chain in the country where we have seen so much of transformation in that. Let me tell you, the evaluation process was not so easy. We all had deliberated what had been also told. We all had deliberated for each of the nominee, for each of the category, and we have a lot of discussions. And we were allowed to score on our own, giving them the ranking for uh, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. And I should tell you, uh, it was not that individually which have gone, it was a collective average which has gone for the awards of this category. So this is a huge, huge takeaway for the people out here who have given, who have been selected for the awards out here. Now that makes winning this ETH award today by you, the, from the most trusted brand of the country shall make you proud as if you have won the national award in the Indian supply chain management. What, so a big thumbs up to you. But what interested me most was uh, one nominee who developed a digital platform for managing the supply chain in a transparent, uh, transparent manner for the farmers of Northern State who were deprived and struggling due to dubious manual process of getting the right price for their crop. Transforming supply chains with adoption of technology tools are generally made to benefit corporations or the product and the services. But digital transformation of supply chain, which brings customer delight and smile, bring customer more close to the brand. And this is what our Honorable Prime Minister have talked during the recent G7 summit, where he told the global community must turn monopoly in technology into mass usage and leveraging the technology for the public service deliveries. Uh, for the next, uh, for the future, I think you would like to like, see yeah, uh, maybe today. So Mr. Nigam, we'll just go through the others and then come back, if you don't mind. Pardon? I'll just move on. Sure, to sure, sure, sure. Okay. In the interest of time, they'll just reduce the time that we have. 
Thank you, Mr. Nigam, for that, for laying out very well the process that we followed. Uh, Mr. Banerjee, some perspectives from you on the various submissions on what did you see uh, the various participants doing well and what could they focus more on? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but, but I'll take maybe a 15-second detour and, uh, sir, I just want to uh, kind of uh, supplement what, uh, build on what Ajay was saying. I spent close to uh, four decades in this area and listening to you, uh, the strategic framework and the associated thing, which it, it could have been anywhere in any boardroom, and it was so reassuring to hear the thinking behind what the armed forces are doing today. But more importantly, the sheer scale. We cannot even begin to imagine this. You, I think you gave us some glimpses. Uh, it was really uh, a privilege to listen to what you said. Thank you. Uh, getting back to what uh, I had the privilege along with my jury members, although Mr. Nigam has probably outlined everything which we did. Uh, to me, two or three things stand out. I think uh, the focus of the submissions which we had the privilege of going through was sharp uh, and reflects the growing importance of this uh, invisible hand which was described at the beginning by, uh, by the compare. And I think uh, this would, uh, this can only be good news. Uh, today, uh, the supply chain is coming into various, in, in many uh, ways that is manifesting in the performance of an organization or of a company or of a unit. And I think uh, looking ahead, uh, one of the things I would imagine that, that that focus becomes even sharper. Because the, all the entries which we went through, there was a varying level of clarity which we saw. Uh, the clarity of their actions on the impact of the results of the organization. And is, therefore, there's one aspect, if I were to leave behind in, in messaging terms, that supply chain does not exist for the, we, we are not an academy of supply chain. We are, not, we are here to serve a purpose. And the purpose usually is that our organization's objectives or the missions are, are met in fullness. So I think uh, the clarity of uh, uh, those areas would, should get more and more uh, focused as we go along. The second thing which stayed with me, and this is a, uh, this is a request really to the organizer. ET now has done a fabulous job of bringing this discussion center stage. Uh, and therefore, all, all the people who are present in the room are uh, avid students of that, including me. Uh, and, uh, but today, if you ask somebody what is supply chain management, you probably will, if you ask five people, you will get five different answers to that. Uh, and uh, depending on where we sit, the classical approach which I have seen is plan, source, make, deliver, end-to-end -end approaches. Uh, I think uh, it will be good uh, in the coming years to come that we pick on uh, this integrated across the verticals which you talk about and not just talk about one of the verticals because you tend to take suboptimal decisions when you take uh, a siloed or a vertical approach. And the last thing is, uh, there is enormous amount of things which is happening in the area of digital uh, capabilities in this country. So therefore, how is that playing out in, as we develop? Uh, and, I, and my uh, way of looking at it in times to come, this distinction will get in plan source, make deliver would get even blurrier than where it is today. Uh, and we will begin to have a organizational shape or a dis shape of the discipline which will be far more transparent and end-to-end -end than what we see today. So to me, that would be the areas of uh, improvement uh, as we take this uh, thank, journey ahead. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you, Mr. Banerjee. I think well said. Uh, maybe Parul, get to your, your reflections on, you know, where did you see some of the submissions doing well and where could they do more focus on? I think I will sound repetitive. Uh, I'm going to acknowledge, sir, again. Good to see your pain points similar to us. Maybe the scale was less, what we have done, but good to see that. Now, uh, thanks for the valuable insight from Mr. Nigam and Mr. Banerjee. I'd like to dwell more thoughts on that. Uh, what should we have done a better in terms of a, a space where we see the excellence should be a part of us? Before doing that, I would like to first and foremost acknowledge all the, the submissions. They were very great, and some of the narratives were very, very great. And it's great to see that we are propelling towards a future-shaping industry where innovations, excellence, and digital play a very crucial role. And see it working and understanding such a challenging dynamics and understanding what should be focusing on. Maybe a couple of the area, just maybe sound a little repetitive here. Don't put it as a supply chain function. Please put as a business case. 
When you put a business case, it's very important to put executive summary because try to understand the jury is going to understand you. And the executive summary gives a very good setting structure to it, should be very clear and concise, which gives the background. And also talk about the objective you're going to narrate in that. And do relate to the business impact, please. What are the impact of the submissions is going to be done? I'm sure you guys have done a great job in terms of engaging your external partners on the customers, process improvements, and many, many, and I can go on as a supply chainer. But please make it business related. Talk about what the impact it created. And don't shy away from sharing your failures or the challenges you've faced and how it helped you align and agile the nature. Because it's very important to accept those. And the last and the not the least, do bring on some pieces on sustainability or any different practices which you have adopted and which you think which have higher impact on the other industry or other organization. Last but not the least, if you follow these things in the mind, I'm sure the next jury will have a tough time to find out who's going to be winner. With this note, I'd like to thank you and wishing all of you all the best. Thank you, Parul. Uh, Amitabha, maybe, you know, one quick view from you in terms of saying that you've seen various entries, any standout entries that you think, uh, which you felt were, you know, had to be called out uh, in terms of what the jury across the board saw. Thanks, Ajay. First and foremost, let me echo what uh, Mr. Nigam said about this being the one of the most important award program in the country and uh, quite rightly established by the fact that we had more than 80 entries uh, in, the, in the awards categories across seven categories and 50 plus organizations participated in that. Having said that, yes, there have been entries at different maturity levels and uh, certainly there were more entries in certain categories and there were less in some. The ones I would say were many in terms of categories was digitization in supply chain and as Lieutenant General has lightly mentioned that procurement, supply chain and logistics is the field where there is huge opportunities of digitization and uh, bringing in a lot of digital uh, interventions uh, to bring in efficiencies, bring in um, cost reduction as well as transparency uh, in, in the organization's success. So digitization is where in one area where we have seen certain entries which were really um, at a very, very high level of uh, intervention of uh, digital tools, whether it is machine learning, whether it is digital analytics, digital twinning, uh, all these kind of things we have seen in certain entries which have really uh, impressed us and uh, gives us a lot of confidence that uh, Indian industry is really adopting supply chain uh, in, the, in the best uh, possible manner to bring uh, success to the business. That, that would be all from my side, Ajay. Thank you. Th thank you, Amitabha, for that perspective. Uh, Mr. Gajanan, you know, what, what to get, would be useful to get your perspective uh, on A, themes that you saw from a standout perspective, themes that you saw in some of the standout entries, and from the government standpoint, as you see the future of supply chain, what are some of the things that you are seeing, elements that can be covered? Thank you, Mr. Nair. Uh, I thank uh, ETS for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I, since I come from government, so I'll uh, touch upon the government perspective on supply chain management. What is the future priorities of the government? Uh, speed and cost. These are the two topmost priorities of the government in supply chain management. These are future priorities. You see, now the time is changing and supply chain management is also not the same which was uh, during last four or five years. It is changing, it is evolving. You see the blanket. You blink and uh, the, your items come at your doorstep. The government is also working in this direction. And, uh, you know, 
the last delivery last delivery uh, last mile delivery is still costly and uh, also logistic cost in india is also 8 to 9% it is costly it has to be reduced if somebody has to sustain in business they have to reduce this government is taking many initiatives in this direction they are linking railway line ports they are ma ma making metros they are making multimodal uh, hubs for faster delivery they are coming up with the ecosystem uh, of inland waterways for 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 uh, for cheaper uh, delivery so these are all these things uh, parvat mala sagar mala as you have mentioned these are few projects uh, which are coming up government is infusing a lot of investment in uh, making supply chain management faster and faster whatever you employ you employ your uh, drone or uh, digitization or everything this all is for a speedy delivery and cutting the cost if you cut the cost you will sustain in the business you will sustain in the market and if you f deliver faster your uh, 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 your recipient or your customer will be satisfied and you are also benefited that immediately you get the money back so these are two things which are most important but at the same time government might also come with some legislation in the sense uh, for sustainable uh, uh, supply chain management sustainability is also the priority item of the government uh, sdc goals are being uh, uh, being being uh, met by 2030 and we have to reduce the emission uh, by 40% 45% by 2030 so carbon emission reduction is only the way is the supply chain has to be sustainable we have to be So we have our package packaging system should be sustainable. Our uh, logistics should be sustainable, and our processes, manufacturing process, have to be sustainable only. Then only we can move ahead. And this is the need of the our world is crying for this. I think. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Prasad. And I think uh, you know don't want to take any more time. I think the jury members can talk much more given the extent of discussions which happened. But don't want to hold back. Uh, the discussions and the presentation ceremony so that the bodies can be announced thank you so much for your time hope you all got a sense of what the jury went through thank you thank you thank you very much indeed to all of our jury members i'm going to request you to please remain on stage and on that note if i could please invite none other than ali asim mahmood ibrahim managing director of port said east port suez canal zone to please come on stage sir and if i could please request you to present a token of gratitude to the amazing jury members calls for a Kodak or a Canon moment so I'm going to request all of you to come together for a group photograph if I could request you all to either come together or step forward whichever is comfortable or as per the aesthetics of a photographer 